Casting the golf club in the downswing is one of the most frustrating things you can do in golf. It burns up your club head speed, and we've all heard the common instruction to try to build lag or retain your lag as you're coming down to release the club later in the swing. But if it was that simple, wouldn't we all have stopped casting? So I'm actually gonna get into two things that I see every single person that comes to me for in-person lessons they're struggling with when they cast the golf club. I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that cast once and for all. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so when we're casting, we're coming down, we're losing a lot of speed, we're losing all the angles between our forearms and our club, and what's happening is our club is accelerating too quickly as we're starting in the downswing. So as we're halfway down, if you're looking at a professional golfer, the club is only moving about 30 or 40 miles an hour, and then accelerates with the driver all the way up to about 120 miles an hour at impact. With someone who's casting, the club head is actually moving a lot faster back here, maybe 50, 60 miles an hour. It's burned up a lot of the speed, already released that, and then the club is decelerating as it's coming into the ball or just not accelerating as quickly. So that's kind of the part that we all know. We all know how, how casting is bad and why we don't want to be doing that. It also tends to add a lot of loft to the club head. So now when we flip the club and our hands are over top of the ball, we're adding, instead of having four chaff lean, we're back here and we're adding more loft to the face, which means the ball is gonna go up a little bit higher. So now let's talk about the real root cause of this. So if we could just change this, I think we would all do that immediately and start hitting the ball better. What's the underlying cause that's making it difficult for you to get rid of that cast? There's two things. The first thing that I always see everybody that casts, because we tend to flip a little bit, the ball goes higher. Well, the natural tendency now is to put the ball farther back in the stance. So if you look here, the ball is almost off the inside of my back foot. Some people will put it just behind center if they start to cast. And now it's easier for me to get forward shaft lean and to hit down into this ball more. And that's gonna get me that lower, more penetrating ball flight, but it causes me to actually keep on casting to hit a good shot. So if I have this ball slightly back in my stance, and we can imagine now, if I just let this club swing on its natural arc and make a circle, the low point of this arc is gonna be kind of on the inside of my left shoulder. Well, as I'm coming through, if I had forward shaft lean and I did this, I would hit the top of the ball and it would go dribbling down the fairway. So we obviously are not gonna do that. We subconsciously realize, well, that's just not gonna work. And we go ahead and we start to cast and release that club face so that we can reach the ball and hit the ball and the ground at the same amount of time. So what's happening there is we have this steep, vertical, very steep angle of attack and more of a circular swing. And as we're doing that, the club is moving down into the ground, big heavy divot. So we scoop to shallow that up and the bottom of our swing arc looks kind of like a circle like this. So that's very difficult to be consistent when we're doing that. The first thing that we have to do is we have to get that ball farther forward in the stance. Now, for those of you who cast, you know exactly what happens when you put it forward in your stance. You start hitting it way higher and you lose a bunch of yardage. That's what brings us to the second piece that we have to change every time we cast, and that is getting a flat spot with forward shaft lean as we're coming through the ball. So as we come in properly, we talked about the first time, the incorrect one was coming down steep and having a very circular angle of attack and a circular path coming through contact. If you can imagine my forearm is the ground, we want to have forward shaft lean with this club. And as we're getting close to contact, we're actually going to be coming in level and that club is going to stay level with the ground a good six or eight inches there. When we have forward shaft lean and a level angle of attack, just like the pros, pros are only coming in a couple of degrees, somewhere between two and five degrees down into the ball which if you can imagine a clock face, that's less than one minute, one minute hand, that little wedge there. So they're coming in very, very shallow. That's because they're getting the flat spot. So let's go ahead and move that ball up in the stance and I'm gonna show you how to do this correctly. All right, so what we wanna do is as we're coming into contact, if I pause just prior to contact, just before my club reaches the ground, you're gonna see that I have a lot of forward shaft lean here and my club is almost coming into contact with the ground. Now from here, what's actually happening is my handle the, the butt end of the club, if you can imagine there's a line sticking out of this, it's actually raising vertically. It's coming back up. That's because my hands and arms are naturally working back up. My shoulder is working in a circle and working back up vertically this way. And as my, my club comes up, my club head, my handle comes up, the club head is actually still releasing down. And the result there with really good players is they have this six to eight inch zone where their club is almost level with the ground. And that allows you to consistently hit that golf ball time and time again with forward shaft lane. 
So if every time you get forward shaft lean, we have the ball back and we start chopping down into the ground like that, we're never gonna be able to be consistent because it's too small of a margin for error. We gotta widen out that flat spot at the bottom of the swing, give us that good three to four inch area that we can contact the ball anywhere in there and that's gonna allow us to be consistent, to get forward shaft lean and to get rid of that cast once and for all. Now let's go ahead and go over some drills. I got some great step-by-step -step progressions that are gonna help you to actually take this to the course, start hitting the ball better. Now the first thing we're gonna work on here, we're gonna do about 100 repetitions working on this flat spot and getting the club to glide through contact so we have that nice even compression as we're coming through the ball. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pause just prior to impact. I'm gonna pause just prior to the golf ball. My club should be slightly off the ground at this point and I'm probably two or three inches behind the ball. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move this ball out of the way so that I can get this club to glide across the turf. And I wanna focus on putting pressure on the inside of my left heel and I'm actually driving up with my left ankle my hands are naturally coming back up a little bit. My left shoulder is naturally, because it's working in a circle, it's going to work back up a little bit. I'm not trying to pull out of it. I'm just letting that happen. And as I do that, I'm going from big time forward shaft lean here into where I'm releasing that forward shaft lean a little bit. You can see my club start to stand up. And this entire time, I'm just letting that club work through the zone. And you can see just how shallow my angle of attack is as I'm coming into this ball and my club is gliding across the turf for a good six to eight inches. That's what's gonna allow you to get the consistency. Look at pros divots. It looks like they took a razor blade and just sliced off a couple millimeters of turf and you can just see the roots underneath. That's the kind of divot we wanna have. We're gonna do 100 repetitions focusing on those things that I just mentioned on. Now the second thing that we're gonna do once we have that forward shaft lean, we gotta make sure that we keep the club face square. So a tendency that I see, when you start to lean the shaft forward, my hands go forward and look at the club face now, it's wide open. I wanna make sure that as I lean the shaft forward, you're gonna be getting more forward shaft lean than you're used to. I wanna make sure this face is dead square. And I'm gonna do that by turning my right hand down. You can see how there's an angle between my palm and the back of my forearm here, and the palm of my hand is now gonna be turned down more toward the ground. We have to do that as we get more forward shaft lean. So we're gonna to check to make sure that face is square all the way as we're coming through contact. So another 100 repetitions, getting that face to be square, we're getting the club to glide, and we're just doing that over and over again. The third piece, as we start to speed this up, we gotta make sure that we release the club. We don't ever wanna hold on to this. Remember, we're going from lag to releasing that club. I don't ever wanna hold on to this like, like this as we're coming through contact because I'm never releasing this angle. I'm never getting the speed from the club. So I'm gonna pause, just like we talk about in our straight line release on the top speed golf system. I'm gonna pause about three feet in front or four feet in front of the ball. My hips, my shoulders, my club, everything is in a 45 degree angle going forward. And now you can see how I've released all these angles with my golf club. So now I'm gonna make some bigger swings and I'm just gonna pause as I'm coming through there, making sure that I go from forward shaft lean and then I release this club out in front. Another 100 repetitions doing that. So these are just little mini swings, kind of half back and half through. Once you're comfortable with that, we're gonna tie it all in together. We're gonna make some full practice swings all the way back, all the way through, really feeling that club gliding through the turf. Then we're gonna go ahead and hit some full shots. Work on these drills, tie it all together, go out to the range, and you guys are gonna hit some of the best shots of your life. There we go, that was dead solid. And you can see how my divot just kind of scraped off the top layer of grass, didn't dig down into the turf, and I hit that one nice and clean. Good luck to you guys, I'll see y'all soon. All right guys, so I hope y'all really enjoyed this video, but I got a great bonus for you. I'm gonna talk about the number one lag mistake that I see people making. We all know that we gotta create huge amounts of lag and release that to get a lot of swing speed. I'm gonna go over the number one mistake absolutely free of charge. That video is gonna start playing here in a second. Click the link and it pops up in your screen or down below in the description if you wanna see that full video absolutely free. Also, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe, that way you'll see our latest videos plus Swing Speed Saturdays. I'll see y'all soon. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're gonna to try to hold this 
throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I want to use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.